Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony rock on YSB. Talking about, uh, I don't know how we got on that, but talking about our old uh, GM, Brucey Mittman, and all the meetings we used to have to take with certain uh, groups back when we were up in Boston. The Fagalas, the Schwoogies, all the groups. Behind closed doors, though, it was hilarious. The fact that we needed, uh, the only charity we could find was the uh, Minority Minority Homeless Homeless. Veterans of Boston (laughs) to give money to, because no one else, the Jimmy Fund, didn't want our money. Didn't want our stinking money to help kids with cancer. They'll solicit movie theaters so you could throw uh, your uh, popcorn money into a can, but they didn't want uh, $100,000 from Opie and Anthony. Blood money. It's like taking it from a terrorist. So, um, yeah, we got the uh, minority homeless vets of Boston on board. (laughs) And when we finally got the uh, money to give them from CD sales, a substantial sum, we sent our GM over there. We were busy that day to uh, give them the the big check, the big photo op check. Hey, look at that. And he said... There's a shot of us in our little uh, goalie gear. Oh, yeah, let me see that. On the inside cover of Demena World. Let me see those pictures. And, and he said, uh, why do I have to go and give the check to the Schwoogies? The Schwoogies. Schwoogies. After we were on the air, you know, telling everyone how how nice we were and how cool we are because we were raising money for the minority homeless vets. And then behind closed doors, he was pissed and telling That's us that right. he had to deliver the check to the Schwoogies. Yeah, there we are in our hockey outfit with the frying pan. Look, see? You can see the frying pan tape to my crotch area. All right. Anyway, Anthony, I, I, I remembered the third story, by the way. Oh, you did? Two words. What? Cancer kids. Oh, no. Not a funny story, but uh, we'll explain in a minute. God. First, we it had was, a... It was uh, Bruce Mittman's idea of getting us out of some serious trouble. Yeah. Go hang out with cancer kids. That'll make everyone love us. See, if we have a photo op and use right, poor we'll children. Hold on, go to the gay thing first, and then we'll get into cancer kids. Well, we were... Uh, we'll finish up the, the segment on our old GM, Bruce Mittman, the midget. And we did, um, we did Hi, Mom, I'm Gay. Simple game. A guy calls up his uh, mother and um, says that he's gay. It's harmless. Let me play it. Okay. And then we'll tell you what happened after this aired in Boston. Right. All right, Bob, are you ready to play uh, Hi, Mom, I'm Gay? Absolutely. Now, I hear you're 35 years old. Yeah. Never been married. Ever. Are you gay? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) No rope swallowing. (laughs) All right, Bob, let's give it a shot. All right. You got to try to convince her, man. All right, I'll do my best. Let's give your mom a call, man. Hello? Mom, can you hear me, darling? Yeah. It's Bobby. Bobby? Yeah. Where are you? I'm at work. Yeah, well, you sound awful funny. Yeah, I know. All right. Hey, uh, Mom, you sitting down? Why? Uh, I got to tell you something. What? Uh, don't get nervous. Something I've been meaning to tell you. I was going to call. tell you when you called earlier today. Yeah? Uh, I'm gay. Oh, you're full of s***. I'm a Twinkie. I, I swear it. Bobby, will you stop it? You know, I have <laughs> enough aggravation. What? How come you, don't, you never believe me? Because I don't believe you. Why? Well, you just had a child, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. That was to throw you off. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I wanted to tell you that. I was hoping you wouldn't take it lightly, but... Bobby. What? Are you trying to be funny? <laughs> I'm not. I had to tell you, you know, I just don't feel right. I've known it ever since I was a kid. Bobby, are you with Donna? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. All right. With okay. Lenny. I, I, you can tell your father that. I'm not even going to bring it up. All right. right. I, you're the one that's always said some terrible things about those people. So what's, what's the, you know, what's all of a sudden? Well, it was to throw everyone off, you know? Bobby, I don't believe it. However, you know. You still I, love I me? I had enough heartache. I, I think, you know. Good you God, still love I, me? Of course I love you. You just won't kiss me on the lips anymore, huh? Bobby, what the hell are you doing? Drinking? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, I'm working. Your father's out to lunch. Have you told Gene this? Uh, no, I was going to spring it on him tonight. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you do that. Stand stand a long distance away, will you? Uh, I will, out of arm's reach. Bobby, don't give me that baloney, please. You break my hat when you do things like this. I'll talk to you later when I when I can sit down with you. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. All right. I love you. See you later. I love you, too. Okay. 
<laughs> Holy Jesus. Dude. I, I got to get back to her quick, man. Yeah, She's going to put a knife that. in her wrist. You better do that. <laughs> Hey, Bob. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I'm, I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> this guy sounds like the manliest dude around. I've been meaning to tell you for a long time, Bob. I'm gay. Uh, I'm that, that, that'll, that'll explain the rough throat. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Twinkie, Bob. That's, I'm a twink. That's how I got this throat this bad, Bob. <laughs> And there you have it. I, hi, Mom, I'm gay. Mom, darling. Mom, it's Bobby. Bobby. It's Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we played Hi, Mom, I'm gay. And all of a sudden, a bunch of gay guys, uh, this organization, comes out of the woodwork saying, do you know how difficult it is for a guy to come out of the closet? This should not be uh, made uh, fun of. It's a very tough time for them to tell their parents. And you making light of it, blah, 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 give me a big C. So if that happened down here... Our boss would say, "Go f yourself." Yeah, they go. They said so they would say that, right? But uh, up there, no. Yeah, they folded and and they they set up a meeting. They set up a meeting between this uh, gay guys, uh, good gay guy, yeah, and uh, us. Hey, in the boss's hey. office. Hey, as the boss sat there, oh. and the boss in front of everybody's like, uh, "We have to." Um, Meet with the uh, Gay and Lesbian Alliance of uh, uh, whatever. And then we get behind the closed doors, and it's like, all right, how long is this going to last? He goes, I don't know, the faggot isn't here yet. Uh, he should be arriving shortly. I'm sure the, the queer isn't going like to take up much of your time, boys. The the homo faggot queer should be leaving well before showtime, so boys. The, so then you fast forward another half hour, and we're now in in the boss's office with uh, the gay guys. With the gay guys. And and the boss with his arms folded looking at us like he's pissed. Yeah, so he's got to look like he's all aggravated with us as the gay guys. And we're sitting there like, you son of a bitch, ten minutes ago you're calling them faggots. <laughs> the gay guys are handing us pamphlets and books. Uh, dittos. Uh, about, dittos, all kinds of reading material about how hard it is to come out of the closet. Remember? They wanted us uh, to read a book. I forgot. The, uh, I forgot, but it was like Bernie's story. Yeah, yeah. And it was about him coming out of the closet. A book. We're like, we're not reading. Like, do you books? think we're gonna read this? Oh, you think we're actually gonna sit and read this? But then, but we were just sitting there, all dopey. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll go through this. All right, thank you, thank you. Goodbye. And finally, we just said, look, we gotta go. It's time to leave. And Bruce, he gets up. Thank you so much. For enlightening us on the <laughs> trials and said. tribulations of homosexuality and the various hardships one must endure. And the boys are now more sensitive to I the fact. I believe they're more educated. Thanks for coming by and enlightening, enlightening my boys. Okay, goodbye. goodbye. Okay, the bunghole pirate's gone, boys. You can now go back on the air. Please lay off the fags today. Maybe hit the schwoogies. <laughs> You know, you boys never in trouble with the spicks. I'm very proud. Uh, I'm boy. Nick, what's going on? Yeah, you guys got this guy on tape. The guy, I got to hear this guy's voice now. The guy did our show a couple times in New York. In New York, when we first got here, uh, he came into New York to do some business, and we had him on the air. And he's like, oh, oh, how are my boys? I wish I would have heard him. Boys. We'll try to dig up some tape of him. All right, thanks, guys. All right, buddy. Bye. Boys, some gooks are calling, complaining about some of your various Asian bits. You know, as we were kind of getting our thoughts together during commercials, and I'm thinking about it, and things are coming back to my memory that I blocked out. Because this was just one of those things that I didn't want to be part of. It was horrible. We walked out. We walked out. We did walk out. After they brought Billy. <laughs> little Billy. All right. All right, little Billy. <laughs> Stop it. We, we showed we had hearts that day. Oh, we finally reached our limit. Boys. Like, boys, boys. He was always trying to uh, run block for us in his own inimitable little way, the little midget. And he would be all PC in front of the person. But then he'd turn around and, you know, call them shwoogies or faggots. faggots. The faggots have left, boys. You can resume bashing the faggots. Well... We finally come to the uh, the famous prank. Yeah, when we did that mayor thing, said the mayor was dead, and we were on the verge of getting fired. We didn't get fired that day. It went a good week before they actually fired us. So in that week, um, Brucey is trying to do damage control. Now, this, it's not working. The mayor was so pissed off, uh, but they came up with this idea. 
Well, you, you got to tell everyone that uh, they hired hired a PR firm. Yeah, they hired a PR firm just for this to try to put out make the us look good. To make us look good and put out the fire so we could keep our jobs and continue rocking Boston. Now, if you remember, um, Opie, when when we got uh, in trouble, Brucey and Dada Dave got together and decided that they were going to approach the mayor, Mayor Menino, and say, look. The same mayor that we just told everyone died in a car accident yeah. on April Fool's. Look, we'll go into um, Boston. Put the boys in those stocks, those old stocks where you put your head and your arms through and you're locked in there. And the mayor that we said was dead will throw pies at the boy's face. And everything will be okay after and, that. And then that, that's fine. This is the idea that Dada Dave came up with. So that's all okie dokie. He, so, told, he told the midget, look, I can handle this. I got a great way to get us out of this. Mess. Great way to get us out of trouble. Oh, yeah. We had, okay. we had news it. crews camping outside our residence. Yeah, and this is going to take care of it. Just a, uh, a bunch of our listeners and, and the mayor throwing pies at our face as we're in a stockade. So get to this. Get this. Before they even check with the mayor or us or anything, Dada Dave goes and orders about 500 pies. <laughs> 500 <laughs> big <laughs> cream pies. Real pies. Not not whipped cream and tinfoil pie tins. Well, Real He wanted pies. us to get hurt. They were like big lemon meringue pies, the, the, apple pies. The reason why the uh, the old pie gag works is because it, all it is is whipped cream. Yeah. But he, no, real pies. He's going to throw real pies at us. <laughs> 500 <laughs> pies, he orders. So now we get on the air when we find out about this. And, yeah, go ahead. The next day. I just got to jump in. Because we didn't really get fired April 1st. We did the show. We were on the next day. April 2nd. April 2nd. We start getting wind of this pie scheme. So we go off and say, we're not doing this. We are not going to go in stocks and have pies thrown at us by anybody. Dave comes running in all pissed off. You don't tell me what you're going to do. I'm trying to get uh, damage control here. This is off the air. He starts yelling at us. I'm trying to help you guys out and do damage control. You don't get on the air and say you're not doing this. And you're so tame. Oh, he was screaming. You don't do that. It was. Because I said so! All raging pissed off. 500 pies you are. It was Davy. It was Davy Dearest. <laughs> Davy Dearest. Because he was, he was screaming there in that You'll same... You'll get hit with these pies! Because he, he was screaming in that same cadence. Yeah. <laughs> Brucey, get the pies! <laughs> And you know what, Ant? I have that audio on a dad somewhere. Somewhere. And to this day, I cannot find it. And it drives me nuts. Probably the most valuable piece of tape since uh, the Nixon Watergate tape. Without a doubt. And I will find it eventually. Yeah. But, uh, but before you move on with the story. Yeah. Now, uh, if we back up here, we told you guys that they hired a PR firm, right? Mm hmm The midget, Bruce Mittman, who loves the shwiggy so much. Boys, boys. Remember what he did to the mayor? He looked up the mayor's schedule. Yeah, because it was all about damage control and, and putting out the fires. So Bruce Mittman figures if he could get a picture of himself shaking the mayor's hand. Oh right, because what the PR firm does is they have their no. This is a true story. They have their own you know camera camera crew and stuff. So they'll go to events, take pictures, and then they'll put it they'll put it in the paper. This story was so hot. It was it was he hired basically paparazzi. Yeah, because 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 uh, I mean. Uh, any paper in the New England area would, would buy this photo of the general manager of the station that just pulled the most amazing, sickest, ridiculous prank, shaking the mayor's hand. Uh -huh. oh, it, it was gold. So, freaking the midget finds out um, the mayor's schedule. I'm looking up the mayor's schedule, boys. I will fix this for you. The fat Dago will uh, be uh, very happy. So he camps out where the mayor is going to do a, an appearance or whatever, whatever he was doing. I forget exactly. Mm -hmm. The mayor comes out of his little meeting. There's Bruce Mittman, runs right up to him. And there's the paparazzi. Yeah. Even though it was a PR firm, but it was a paparazzi guy going. Snapping pics. Snack, snapping pictures like crazy. Yes, it was in all the Boston papers the next day. Yeah. Bruce Mittman shaking the hand of the mayor. Which infuriated the mayor. Infuriated. Because the mayor had no idea who the midget was. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he thought he was just shaking a, shaking a you know, uh, 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 just a regular schmo's hand. He thought I was welcoming him to Munchkinland, boys. <laughs> boys. Boys. So that, that infuriated the mayor as yeah. well. So then, um, so now um, they, they finally checked. Dada Dave now calls the mayor's office and says... 
I have 500 pies. I have the boys. We're going to do this, right? And the mayor's office just goes, are you out of your effing mind? Do you think we're just going to take our anger with, with the, them and what they did and how they hurt the mayor's family and turn it into some wacky <laughs> radio stunt prank thing? No, take your pies and shove them up your ass. That's pretty much what they said. Yeah. So now, 500 pies ordered. Opie and Anthony in trouble. Damage control not working. PR firm. PR firm phase two now. Right. Okay, we'll take uh, lemons, make lemonade. We got 500 pies. What can we do with 500 pies? We'll send Opie and Anthony to the Children's Cancer Hospital <laughs> to deliver the pies to the little dying children. Like, that's what... A the... great photo effing op mother effer. That's, that, yeah, that's what dying kids want. Pies. So now we're going to use kids with cancer to try to make it so ONA can keep their goddamn jobs. Right. And we were so... Uh, you know, we got to say it. We were so shell-shocked, uh, we kind of just went with it. Dude, we were going wherever they said at that point. We are just, what? what? Yeah. We, what? Okay, every, every hour they're running promos on the news about updates on where we are, what we're doing, how does the mayor feel, when are they going to get fired, are they they fired? Who knows? This is our lives, and we're we're just like freaking out. We were like Stepford DJs. We were just oh okay, all right, whatever. With the flow, and, and we really didn't know what they were doing. They go, just be at this hospital at this time. There's going to be a photographer there. So we're like, okay. They didn't tell us about uh, uh, the cancer hospital. I think all right. They, well, there's a kid with a broken leg. We'll shove a pie in his arm and we we'll leave. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> We go there. This stuff is done all the time, by the way, by these PR. Oh players. yeah, when you see some schlep jock standing there with a, uh, you know, hugging a uh, uh, little crack babies, you think he wakes up and goes, "Well, I think I'm gonna go hug some crack babies today." No, that guy has a story to tell, and he's trying to get himself out of some trouble. Right. So in they, most cases, I'm sure there's there's good-hearted souls. We go to this hospital. There's the truck, 500 pies, and in the truck, and they start bringing them in. They start bringing in the pies. We're in the lobby of the hospital. Now, that, now the, 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 the people that worked at the cancer hospital, they didn't know the whole story. They really didn't know who we were at this point. No. They, they really thought that you and I and the radio station was doing a good deed. Mm -hmm. That's all they knew at first. Now we're standing around waiting for the photographers. Right. And the... Um, they got the pies just pies loaded coming in. all the way up to the ceiling. Pies, pies, you know, pies. As far as the photo op goes, it was, it was quite impressive. <laughs> so... so <laughs> Now they go, okay, let's start bringing the children in. Right. Like, all right. So, so we're, like we're, I said, kid with a broken leg. Yeah, at this point, we still think it's just a regular. Oh, look at that. Little Mary just got her tonsils taken out. How cute. Hopefully you can enjoy the, the, the lemon meringue. But you can't eat the crust. Your throat still hurts. <laughs> they start wheeling out kids with the, the clumps of hair coming out, the baldy heads. Uh, look. The, Look, this I, dude. We're not telling the story for a joke. This, this no, this, this is, is what, what happened. So I'm looking at Opie like, oh my god, these these are dying kids. No, 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 no. But I got it back. We did not know at first. We're still thinking, well, okay, they're in bad shape. No, I'm looking, and in my head, I'm thinking, oh my god, they're dying kids. I'll tell you when I found out. When? All of a sudden, even though this was uh, like April 5th or so, okay. All the kids are around the pie, stacked up to the ceiling. We're waiting. For, we're still waiting for the photographer. That was the re reason we waited right. so long. Um, and all of a sudden, there's little Mary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looking just like <clears throat> Cindy Lou Who. <laughs> and she's like the, the leader of the cancer kids. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey. little Little impish little uh, kid. Sure. Little cute kid. Still cute. Okay. And, and and you look at her, you're like, oh, this doesn't seem like anything's wrong with her. And they go, Mary, uh, why don't you sing a song? You think the rendition of Ziggy doing Silent Night is beautiful? Yeah. This girl, like an angel, Silent Night. <laughs> and all the cares of kids joining in, right? Choir. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hey, 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 it's the cancer kids. <laughs> it was a cancer uh, kid choir, yes, right? Yeah. So she's like in this this voice from heaven. And I'm really getting into it. Like, wow, yeah. that's kind of cool, you know? Yeah. All of a sudden, one of the, the helpers, the oh. nurses, or whatever. Oh, no. Bends over to me and whispers in my ear, goes, you know, Mary's not going to see Christmas. No. Because it was April, all right? What happened? I was just talking to her. She was just singing. Get kidding. Mary's not going to see Christmas. 
So I look at it. I think at this point, seriously, I turn white as a ghost. Like, yeah. what the f are we doing here? Yeah, they're there. And now all the cancer kids children. are 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 looking at uh, Aunt and I like we're heroes because we brought all these pies. We brought a bunch of pies. And we're like, we're we're not this. Uh, we're, yeah. Hey, we're not this nice. We're we not know. nice. We're not doing this out of the kindness of our hearts. We're using these kids. We were thrown into the situation, did not know, and they think we're heroes, and we're like, we are scumbags. To use kids like this to try to save our, our necks, the station puts this goddamn thing together. Now, we're still waiting for the photographer. Right. And um, then the nurses go. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I don't mean to laugh. I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable because I don't want to be known as a dick for this story because this is, this is an insane story. Go the ahead, nurses Anthony. go, okay, why don't we get Billy? So it's like, what, well, why, you know, why, why isn't Bi Billy why here with Billy the rest just of the kids? Why didn't Billy get wheeled out or walk out or use the crutches and come out with the rest of the kids? Why don't we get Billy? It was sort of like get the gimp. <laughs> the gimp sleeping. No, it, no he was the I only kid God, that wasn't was, there. We're like, why isn't Billy there? Suddenly, I hear a low hum down the hallway. Here comes Billy's electric. It wasn't even a wheelchair. I don't know what this was. It was a rolling platform. It was like a wheelchair with just a head, hooked up to tubes and wires and other devices to keep little Billy alive. And the reason he didn't join the kids in the beginning, the cancer kids, is because basically, you know, he only could muster up enough energy to right. maybe be awake for five minutes. He's a day. like your cell phone's NICAD. You know? You, you don't want to keep it on all the time. You just want to turn it on when you, you got to use it or the battery will so die. Now they bring, uh, yeah, they wheel little Billy in. Billy down the hall. Now it's complete. The smile on the kid's face, I'm like, holy. Uh, at this point, we're like. So you got to go through it. Well, the photographers get there, and uh, me and Opie start having a conference. We're like, N this is the wrongest thing. We have never done anything so wrong, because on the radio, when you're talking, yeah, we say stuff that's really off the wall and wrong. But then to just be directly involved in something like this, they are using the dying children to take a photo op with us, to try to, in some way, spin it in the paper that we're good guys right. and should keep our jobs. Right. So we just turned around and said, no, nah, this ain't it. And uh, we walked. Walked. Took our pies, too. The little kids didn't get it. No, we left the pies. <laughs> no, and the kids didn't know we walked. We like No, no, we, we were like, we goodbye, goodbye. Like, here you go, we're presenting these pies. Yeah, and, and that was all, all fine and well, but uh, it was so depressing and uh, and then we were so friggin pissed at them for putting us in this position at uh management and the the pr firm that we just went you know something you guys do whatever you want we're not doing another thing if we get fired we get fired F it. and they got mad at us because we walked because we walked pictures we missed the little photo op to use the dying children to try to save our necks that's like just gunfire breaks out you pick up little billy's head and try to block the shots that's what it was like <laughs> what? It was. Little Billy's still alive, by the way. He's on the phone. Billy. Ooh, ooh. It was horrible. It was. And, of course, uh, the story ends. We did get fired. Yeah. And, and you know uh, it was the best thing that ever happened. And we took it. Best thing that ever happened. Boys, boys, I'll try to hire you back, boys. <laughs> Why didn't you take pictures with the cancer kids, boys? Boys, why not take pictures with those little dying craps? <laughs> Proofy. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's try to end on an up note. <laughs> Too late. Two one two seven five seven. This young lady is flat.